Hey guys, beautiful day today. Today what we're doing is we're starting to plant our tomato plants. And who in the hell doesn't love tomatoes? Okay, they're sweet, they're, they're, they can be sour, they can have a peppery taste, nothing better than a tomato. So today we're gonna to be planting one plant to show you how, at least what we do here at Poplar Hall, how we plant our tomatoes. We're actually gonna be planting a species called early girl, which is an indeterminate species, which means, as everyone knows, they are climbers and they can get anywhere from eight to nine foot tall. You obviously need some type of apparatus to, to enable the support for these things. So we'll get into that later, but what, we, what we've built here at Poplar Hall is we build our own tomato cages that are called tutors, which are a French, French word, and we'll get into that later, but they will be the supports made out of wood, and they're, um, they're amazingly designed, and I'm really, really proud of them. They're really, really cool, but we'll get into that later. What I wanna focus on is the actual soil. Everyone tends to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and they buy this highly, you know, highly updated soil that has all kinds of nutrients in it. Um, you don't have to do that when you have regular soil from your, from your property and you, and you mix it with a compost if you are into composting. So what we have here is, is basically homemade compost. Um, as you can kind of see how, how nice this holds together. Uh, again, when you're looking at compost, you don't want a clay. You don't want something that holds. You want it to hold for a second, and then as you move it, it falls apart. That, to me, that is an amazing compost. And as we can see, as you want to highlight this here, we already have earthworms in here. So you know this is what you're looking for. Where'd you go, little buddy? There you go. So we have we have worms in here. There's a lot, there's a lot of organisms in here working and doing what they do to break down all the wood. So what we're doing is this is this stuff is going to be breaking down. We're going to add this to our tomato, uh, the hole we actually put the tomato in, and we're going to mix we're going to mix our mix our compost to the natural soil that we have here at Poplar Hall. Which again, from a from a history perspective on our property, this English garden that I designed was part uh, of where cows were. So there was livestock out here for the longest time. So basically what that means is you're, you're getting natural soil. There, there wasn't, any, we don't use any kind of pesticides on any of the stuff. So the soil here is, is already amazing. Obviously I showed you how this is. If you look at what we're gonna be planting in, this actually does the same thing. It's really well done soil. It's, it's actually a beautiful soil to be honest. It's, it's really, it's what you really need. I don't even really need any compost, to be honest. Uh, I like to use it just because I have it and I wanna, I wanna put the best foot forward and have the best product out there. So we're gonna use it anyway. It's not gonna hurt, it's, it's always going to help. But again, it, it will, it will it'll better the soil for future years to come and I'm excited to use it. So let's get started. Okay, so if you haven't planted a tomato plant before, it's incredibly easy. This is not rocket science. I, I think what, what I tend to focus on is after it's planted, making sure it has the right structure, making sure it's watered correctly, making sure tomatoes, like every other plant, needs to have a good amount of sun. So I put this, you know, right here. If you look at where this garden is, the reason why I put them in these back quadrants is because it gets sun for almost all the day. And then towards the end of the day, the sun goes behind this, this pin oak tree and it shields it from just a hot day. But again, tomato plants need full, they need full sun. So we're digging our hole. And again, you're really loosening up the soil, which is again, we've, I've already rotated till this. Um, I've done it twice. So this area is already ready to rock and roll. I, I try my best to take the stones out of as much as I can which does make the difference when you're, when you're looking for roots to grow in, 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 the, uh, in the hole that you're digging. So, okay, just a standard hole. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna backfill with a little bit of uh, compost. Again, look at that stuff, is that amazing? You can see the difference here. Again, that's exactly what you're looking for. So again, what I wanna make sure I stress is that a lot of people will throw compost right in the hole. And my dad taught me this. To grow strong plants or strong trees or shrubbery, when people tend to buy soil from, from, from home stores or whatever, that enriched soil is great for a certain amount of time. 
but sometimes when you plant them in the ground and not in a pot, you want, you want the plant to have to go grab the water. You want them to survive on their own and not have to rely on watering every single day and adding nutrients and that kind of thing. So we are giving it the best foot forward here by mixing you know, really good soil with, with, again, homemade compost. So it's gonna have everything it needs. You shouldn't have to baby a plant like a tomato plant. If you buy it from a reputable dealer, they already have healthy plants. You don't have to worry about it. But I just stress that you want to mix your local soil in with your compost so it's even. And that, that will give you, again, you'll see, you can see the you can see the darkness mixed with that. That's going to give you your best. That's going to be give you what you need to have a, a great tomato plant. And again, an early girl, just to give you a little bit of background on what that's going to give us, it is a major climber. It's going to get about eight to eight to nine feet tall. Um, it, it will produce a lot of beautiful red beefsteak kind of color tomatoes, which again, on a sandwich, on a BLT, on a cheeseburger, man, that's the best shit you can ever ask for. So let's get this baby planted. The one thing I always look out for, because in this area, you know, I've amended this soil over many years and we try to get rid of the clay because in Delaware, there's a lot of clay deposits and um, water will not go through it. And that's a, that's a death sentence for a tomato plant if he's not taken care of. So you wanna make sure that you reduce the amount of clay or at least break it up and, and put other soils in to mix with it. So it's a little bit more compost. All right, looking good. So let's plant this baby. Okay, as we all know, or as I hope you know, this is already root bound. So root bound meaning that the roots have already started to circle the bottom of the plant. So this is, this is something that you wanna make sure this does not hurt the plant. This is something that you always have to do is you wanna to start to unbreak up those, those roots and you just wanna agitate them so that they aren't surrounding themselves because they will choke each other out and that's not what you want, obviously. A lot of times we'll take a, a, a gardening knife and cut the bottom off to, if it's really, really root bound, but this is going to be fine. But I always like to give it a little bit of a, a, a spread there at the bottom. Okay. Okay, hole. Backfill, and then you're pressing down. You really want that support mechanism of compressed soil to be the main thing in the beginning. That's what's gonna keep this thing up. I also, a uh, rule of thumb, again, another thing I learned from my, my dad was, um, at least early on, creating a little bit of a well, if you have well-drained soil, only if you have well-drained soil, by the way, you wanna create a little bit of a well because hot days like today, you know, although tomato plants crave heat and crave sun, you have to be able to keep moisture in them no matter what. And we have incredibly well-drained soil here, so I don't have to worry about it. So we wanna, when we water, we wanna keep it around the plant. So a little bit of a well, I think is the way to go here. And then you have, a, you have your plant. So again, what we're gonna do, this plant is ready to roll. So we actually already have a couple fruit, actually tomatoes growing on here. And uh, we're gonna let this thing go. I, I probably could, cut these off and, and make a second plant. And I might even consider that, but as of right now, I'm just gonna go with what we have. Uh, it's, it's much better when things are in the ground than they are in a pot. So I always tell people, you go to the store or you go to your landscaping area, or you go to your local garden shop, you buy loads of plants. People tend to stress out about where they're gonna go, what's the pot, how's the garden, blah, blah, blah. And I'd be lying if I said that I don't care about that stuff too but get your damn plants into the ground ASAP. That's, what you're, that, that's what's gonna be a problem if you leave them sit outside and you're waiting around trying to design something. Get them in the ground first or in a pot with dirt, and if you decide to move them, that's fine too. But just get, get, them, get them out of your garage, just plant those damn things. Okay, if we wanna take what 
most people consider a tomato cage. Um, these are the wood tutorials that I designed and made with my uh, father-in-law out of uh, oak wood. They will, they're an English design, but basically what they're going to act as, as a tomato cage. And we know that ultimately being an indeterminate, um, an indeterminate tomato plant, this baby will climb up here. A lot of times what I do is I take a, a rope early on before they reach here, but I will tie something as they get about another foot larger. And then once they get to this level, I end up picking up the small limbs and I, and I usually drape them over the top part here. And then that alone will give it everything it needs to grow up through the uh, tomato cage. And then these things will be growing out and the fruit will be everywhere. So these things act incredibly well. Um, I'm gonna share, ultimately share the, the design of these things. Um, and if you decide to make them yourself, you can. So in our kitchen garden, which is enclosed in a boxwood hedge, when I designed that, I knew that we were going to be planting a lot of tomatoes of what you do in, in this part of the region of the United States in Delaware. We all love tomatoes, as everyone knows. Tomatoes are, dis, are, are basically decided to two different things. You have indeterminate and determinate tomato plants. Determinate are ones that grow small, almost bush-like. Indeterminate are ones that actually travel up a trellis or need to be guided and they can go to eight to nine foot tall. So I knew for me to plant a lot of a lot amount of tomato plants, I needed to have some type of structure that would support these, these uh, large plants. Obviously you can buy them at any garden store. Obviously I like to make my own things. So I designed uh, a plan to make these fit the style of the house and still serve a purpose. One of the things I love about them is the way they've aged with the sun. They have a, a, a kind of a whitewash look to them and they just look amazing. The patina on them, it just looks amazing with the wood. And, and I, I absolutely love them. Loads of people ask me where I got them. And I'm, again, I can be more prouder to say that I designed them. I worked with my father-in-law to make them. Uh, they, just, they just fit the look of the house and, and we are, we're really proud of them. They're very cool looking. I, I'm, I'm really, I love them. Okay, so the, the, the design around these two tours are using oak wood of scrap wood that I, that I actually have physically found. And we knew we wanted them to be large. We know that the standard indeterminate uh, tomato plants are around eight to nine foot tall. So these had to be big structures. So what we initially did was we designed them around a, a standard wood box. Again, standard wood, all the same. The sizing is all, as far as width uh, is, and the girth is all the same. And it had to be a very strong base. So we designed a basic, almost like a, a shadow box style. And then we, we uh, used a pyramidal style above that, which again, it's, this is probably 35 to 40% of the height and then the rest goes up. So we wanted the base to be strong and it had to be a, a, a per, almost a perfect box or a perfect square. And then the, the top would be, this would be about 30 to 40% of the height. And then the rest would be a, a pyramidal shape, which again, if you were gonna have the tomato drawn through here, as it gets larger, you would allow the droopiness of the, the, uh, the limbs of the, of the tomato plant, these, these shelves would almost support the plant as it, grows, as it grows larger. And then obviously in the middle of summer, you're gonna have everything kind of coming through, but this structure will easily support the limbs of the tomato plant as it grows. And the good part about this, and the reason why I build it with such a strong structure, is all you gardeners know that once the, once the large fruit of each tomato plant grows on each limb, it always pulls the structure down. This wood will support each tomato fruit as it grows, and it will provide the basis for a very strong plant. And you won't have to worry about limbs splitting. Um, it's, it supports it effectively well. And even in strong temperatures and strong winds, this structure will house this tomato plant with no problem. And as you're picking the fruit, it'll support the rest of it. And if you want, your let, if you, if you want to let your fruit actually uh, sun ripen, there's no problem. Some people always take their fruit off and put it in the windowsill. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. This will support it and be fine. It'll be a perfect structure for your tomato plants. Okay, final step. As we all know, nothing grows without water. So we're gonna, we're gonna provide water to this tomato plant. Another thing that people always forget when watering, 
people tend to pour water over top over top the plant and that just is not the smart way to do it now is it going to hurt this tomato plant probably not it's not going to it's not going to do any major damage um, but what it can do if you don't if you have a shaded area where you're planting your tomato plants or partial shade that water can sit and all of a sudden things can grow in it and you don't want that around your tomato plant. So if you water directly to the soil, you're gonna to have to worry about that kind of stuff. And again, you don't wanna put your plants in any kind of danger of, of breaking. Uh, if you pour a big load of water, a bucket of water, you're gonna break, you're gonna break some of the limbs on the tomato plant. It's not worth doing it. Um, and you don't want to disturb the well that you built. That's important. So as you can tell, if you look here, look at the amazing soil. We poured water on it. Look, it's already gone into the roots of the plant. So this um, this early girl is going to grow like crazy. And I would say within a month and a half, we're going to have tomato, tomatoes from it. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get to some other things around the garden.